Hey, the RP Show continues here live on Game Plus Television, and it's always a pleasure to bring in our good friend Andy McNamara, national fantasy football host, betting host, and Woodbine Entertainment host. Andy, I'm going to start right there, if you don't mind. How are you, my friend, and how are the great people, our friends at Woodbine these days? Rod, great to be back with you, man, and you're doing great. Got the new season starting up end of April, so that's that's huge. The Kentucky Derby's ready to roll, and, you know, King's Plate will be here before you know it. So horse racing, it, it's great because there's always some form of exciting horse racing going somewhere across the world, Japan, California, Canada, whatever. Uh, I know that for a fact, and I'll tell you what, it really threw me for a loop last year. The King's Plate, the uh huh Oh, I know, right? Yeah. It's a king. <laughs> it changes. Yeah, it's a king now. Yeah, it yeah. And, it, and it, they got it back at its regular time and all that. You know what? We'll have to bring you back when the race season does start up, and let's talk about that. Yeah. But you are a football guy, and before we get to your beloved Browns and some questions I have for the AFC North, I'm interested mm. to know if you're dabbling in the NFL draft in terms of betting there and how much you're enjoying the mock drafts and how much we can even believe what we're reading here is we're less than a month away from the nfl draft oh, i love the nfl draft rod for me it starts at the senior bowl goes through the combine and leads right up because there's always those players that the casual fan never hears of and then all of a sudden they burst up and sometimes that's a good surprise like a josh allen a few years ago who nobody was talking about that august and all of a sudden shoots up or it can be a negative surprise. Like, let's say a Zach Wilson going second overall to the Jets. Didn't work out so well. So I'm, I'm tracking this, this draft class. This, is, this quarterback group is very interesting to me because, Rod, I think this has the maybe the biggest chance in a while to have the biggest clump of success or busts in that first round. We're hearing up to six quarterbacks could go in the first round, which would be outrageous. Uh, four of the top five from the last uh, mock draft that I saw because J.J. Yeah. McCarthy has weaseled his way in there. As a matter of oh. fact, yeah. if you've spent, I mean, you love it, but you're analyzing it too. Let's just say the top five. Who goes where, do you think? Uh, Caleb Williams is going first overall to the Bears. That's uh, a given. Now, I'll tell you this, Rod. If, if we, you can mark this, clip it, stamp it. I think we talked two years down the road, the Chicago Bears are looking for another quarterback. I'm not buying. Caleb Williams as a true franchise quarterback. The skill set's there, but I think everything from the personality to the, the um, arrogance to the if something goes wrong in the NFL, and it can go wrong quick, do you have the mental cojones to step up and deal with it? I don't think he does. So that's why, for me, uh, I like Jaden Daniels better. And if it wasn't for the knee injuries, right? give me Michael Penix Jr. all day. I think if, if you could erase those injuries, that guy would be my first overall pick, but you can't. And if somehow he can stay healthy, we might be talking about in a couple of years that, wow, that Penix guy, how the heck did he fall to X number in the draft? So you're saying Jaden Daniels, number two, Drake may, I'm yeah. assuming number three. I'm, I like Drake may because he reminds me a bit of Justin Herbert coming out in that there's stuff you can pick at. And with Herbert as well, like I remember clearly Herbert at the combine, like, man, I don't know, he's, he's not very decisive. And then, and then it, all it took was one wrong doctor needle to the chest of poor Tyrod Taylor. Herbert's in, and he's lighting it up. I feel sort of that same athleticism, big arm type with Drake May. So I would put Drake May uh, in, that, in that number three spot. I think J.J. McCarthy's probably going to go um, next. I, I think J.J. Uh, McCarthy, Rod, this is a Mac Jones 2.0. I can find you a J.J. McCarthy any year in the draft in the third round. I'm not impressed. Bo Nix age-wise concerns me a bit. I think he could be serviceable, maybe fall into a little bit of that Kurt Cousins level where he'll be good, but not, nothing too great. So I think really it falls off after those top three. Well, I'm a J.J. McCarthy fan. Uh, Are you? For my own reason. You want to talk, why you want to talk maturity? You want to talk about maturity, yeah. things he's overcome to lead mm -hmm. Michigan to a national championship, has shown he can run a pro style offense based on what he did with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. So I'm just pulling for JJ McCarthy. But you know, it's interesting here, though. You look at 
you don't want to miss when you have a shot. Like if you're New England and you have a, as high a pick as yeah. this. Like Mac Jones went 15th. They've already tossed him aside. So you don't want to miss. Yet, when you've got Brock Purdy, a Mr. Irrelevant starting the Super Bowl, what does that say? What does that say? I'm not sure. Yeah, it says that you keep swinging at quarterbacks. And we've seen NFL teams in recent years really not be phased if you miss. Okay, missed on that first-round quarterback. Guess we'll go get another one. Right? It, it, it just You have to keep trying until you get it right. And the reason is that rookie contract yeah. is so valuable to build around. We're seeing with the Houston Texans right now. You get C.J. Stroud, their window bursts open after his rookie year. That's why they're adding Stephon Diggs. With that deal, before you get the huge numbers, two, three hundred million, whatever it might be, this is your window to go get it. So NFL teams are just so thirsty to go reach for a quarterback. Um, we could see that. And for teams that don't need a QB, that just benefits them so much because this is a super deep wide receiver class, uh, offensive line as well. So there's going to be some really good players that drop because someone reaches for a QB. We had Mo Egger on here yesterday from ESPN Cincinnati. He's become a good friend. And we talked about the AFC North. We've long, I think everybody agrees, it's, if it's not the toughest division, it's one of the toughest divisions in the NFL. But now it's become the most entertaining with the personalities that have come into that division. What do you think? Agree or disagree with that? I totally agree. You can make an argument, Rod. And you, I, don't, I don't know if you can do this for any other division. You can make an argument for any team in that division to finish first or last and not sound crazy about mm -hmm. it, right? Like the, the Steelers might be a level below that, like, but you bring in Russell Wilson. Boy, if he gets his feet back, you're in good shape, right? Joe Burrow returning from injury. Lamar Jackson back again. Deshaun Watson. The team around the Browns is phenomenal. Can Deshaun finally get back and stay healthy? Lots of questions from each team, but talent-wise across the board, yeah, that, that division just cannibalizes each other. Well, I'm just wondering, because you're the Browns guy, but looking over at what Pittsburgh did, just cleaning out their quarterback room, I think that takes yeah. major balls. And I don't know if that was Tomlin. I don't know if that was Mr. Rooney. I don't know who that was. But I, I've never seen that before. We just wipe out your quarterbacks and bring in two new ones and say, let's see how this well, goes. Rod, they were so bad. And that's why I never bought in with the Steelers saying, we're going to go for it. Look, as a Brown fan, I was like, please go for it with Kenny Pickett and Mason Rubble. Yes, yes, I, I want that. But nobody in their right mind, the Steelers, despite my disdain for them as a Browns fan, uh, are a very smart organization. They knew baby hands Kenny Pickett wasn't doing it. They knew Mason Rudolph wasn't doing it. Trubisky wasn't doing it. You have a team that has a lot of talent that, despite those quarterbacks, finished above 500. Despite that, they had no business finishing above 500, but Tomlin's that good of a coach and that culture's there to build it. So now you bring in Russell Wilson as the, all right, can this guy get it back on try three on his third team? If he doesn't, I got Justin Fields, who still has a lot of potential, but he's going on his X number of coordinator head coach. You have two quarterbacks that could really pop, and you have outs for each one if they don't. So that's why I think it's a good move. If these two don't work out, or one doesn't, one doesn't, Pittsburgh can start again. Uh, we almost reached the end of our time, but I want to ask you about this new venture you've got going. It's on the Fight work, uh, Network, but it's not the Fight Network anymore. Tell me more. <laughs> Yeah, I, I look, I, I'm, I'm helping to spread the word a little bit, Rod, about Triller TV. So on social, at Fight TV, F-I-T-E TV. But if, if you're a Fight fan or, or the viewers are Fight fans, this is something where you're able to get such a combo of combat sports, like All Elite Wrestling, which is my favorite wrestling company right now. You get Samoa Joe, Chris Jericho, all the, all the greats. They had a pay-per-view on Sunday, April 21st on Triller TV in U.S. and Canada international markets but you got these other sports too bare knuckle fighting championship world sumo championship and rod i'm watching some of this i'm like sumo i'll give it a shot and i'm like holy cow this is pretty cool the bare knuckles of boxing from around the world other wrestling it's all right there you got the triller tv plus subscription or the pay-per-views it's just a, look if you're a fight fan check it out it's there's just a lot of cool stuff going on Sounds good, Andy. I appreciate the time, brother. Uh, enjoy the NFL draft. We'll chat afterwards. Yes, absolutely. You too, Rod. Talk to you.
Andy McNamara joining us from Woodbine, national fantasy football host. There's a lot of things this guy's got going on. 